Um, do See you, how you do this? Do you have a favorite, if you had a favorite guest over the duration of this I think the guys, the thoughtful campaign. people. Chris Hitchin, oh, Chris Buckley recently was so good. Chris Buckley, I mean, I've been in situations with Chris, like over the Metropolitan Club when his movie came out, oh, Thank You for Smoking, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah where he and Chris Hitchens, and I had to join them in a toast contest, basically. <laughs> Christopher Hitchens is a genius when he's drinking. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what he's like when he's I don't not know drinking. If he's still drinking. I've never met him in that circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's fabulous. And, uh, and the other fellow, Chris, H Chris Buckley, <laughs> Buckley, grew up. Imagine growing up with Bill Buckley at the table at dinner. Imagine what that was like. And his Intimidating, mom. Intimidating, probably. And, and educational, because you learn how to give a toast, you learn how to button the button with the other arm, you know, you, you know how to do it. You hold your drink just so. Wink just so. You, you, uh, you offer up a toast with great elegance and exquisite uh, excitement, and everybody enjoys themselves. I mean, he's really wonderful, Chris. And he now, with the passing of his dad, his great dad, he's become something of a pundit. Maybe he will join our world now. I think it's interesting. This novelist, uh, in, in announcing his support for Barack Obama, may have made himself a pundit. Something well, he never did when his both. dad was you alive. Can be a novelist it's kind of interesting. Pundit. It's kind of interesting. Uh, since since the, uh, by the you know this this interview will live on forever on YouTube. Um, I just wanted to ask you, who wins in the pundit, in the punditry for you? Like who's the winner of punditry this year? Yeah, I think Peggy Noonan's been really good this year. I think I and I get really tough on people because I think she had a really good run in the in the primaries. Mm -hmm. I think she's a reason to read the journal on Saturdays. Uh, I think she's. I think Gene Robinson's been spectacular. I've been reading Gene all this year. I think his columns in the Post have been the best thing in the Post. Uh, I think he deserved to win the Pulitzer, even if he didn't get it this time. He may get it later. I think he's really good. I think uh, I think Hertzberg's fabulous in the New Yorker. I think John Alder's been great. I think Howard's always great. I'm a big fan of a lot of people. Um, Who's disappointed you? I think I think uh, I think Joe uh, Joe Klein's great. He's great. He's propositional. He comes up with ideas, and you need to think about them. Who's disappointed? Uh, I don't do media criticism. Okay. How do you think Pat Buchanan's done? Because it looks. I think Pat. There's like so many different Pats. There's the Pat who's the arch right winger, right winger, who can somewhat be scary, yeah. put it lightly, there, and I mean it. He's so far over. There's the there's the Pat, the, the genial colleague who is a genial guy to hang around with and a good good sort to hang out and a good person I yeah. think. He's been and then there's the guy that plays the part of the, uh, the irascible Republican who will defend anything no matter how outrageous. And he plays that part sometimes. And then there's the guy who is very much paternal in his feeling towards uh, Governor Palin. And he won't let you touch her. He is very supportive of her. And maybe because she's somewhat part of the Pittsburgh crowd. She Has was one of his people. Has this campaign confused him? I think it's uh, ticked him off. I think he's very unhappy about McCain to start with. And uh, he, does, he thinks he's a, McCain's a mixed bag. He doesn't like the neoconservative takeover of his party. He doesn't like this adventurous foreign policy. He doesn't like it at all. Uh, he's a conservative in that sense. Yeah. And, and I think that, um, I, I would say this, that Reagan and Barry Goldwood are closer to Pat Buchanan than they are to the George W. Bush. Much closer. George W. Bush doesn't fit any historic pattern except maybe he's Wilsonian or, or Napoleonic. Yeah. I think more like. I think well, Napoleonic, the idea that you can enforce democracy by, by military will is a scary idea. Because what you're really doing is fighting wars and saying it's for democracy. It's like the Soviets are somebody pushing wars of liberation, and they'll say it's for liberation. Really, it's just to get more, more geopolitical territory. So everybody says they want something. Watch what they're doing, not what they're talking about. If they wage war, they're trouble. And, and if they talk about it for some higher ideal, they're still trouble. People that start wars are the aggressors. We used to have that standard growing up, and I still like that standard. The person that starts the war is the aggressor. The one who invades is the bad guy. Okay? That's how it works. So, um, more with our... I know word. that's an odd Americanism, no, but it's what we always believed criticism. growing up. The aggressor was the bad word. The, uh, and now you notice you haven't heard it in this regime, this, uh, this, uh, this era. You never hear the word aggressor anymore because it's us. Who wins for surrogacy? Who's been the best surrogate out there? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, um... Well, that's a great question, but boy, that, that requires some memory. Um, I think that I think Ridge is good. I think that um, Ridge is good. I think Rudy's good. He's better at this than he was at that. Uh, he uh, he's been uh, he loves doing it. What makes a good surrogate for you? I mean, uh, you score the points that everybody recognizes are good. You score points that you go, that's true. That's true. I'll give him that. All right. And you walk away. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, all right. 
That's what a surrogate can do. Pick your points and score on them. Pick the right territory and win on it. Don't try to def don't try to defend the indefensible and don't fight on the other team's territory. Fight on your own. Has it been harder for them to be a surrogate for McCain? Probably because McCain is uh, is not a good surrogate for himself because McCain isn't McCain. He's not running a John McCain campaign. Yeah. A John McCain campaign would not be for this fiscal policy. John McCain was against this big tax cut for the wealthy. He said it was wrong to give people tax cuts at the very top and not to have a progressive system. He said it. He supports the progressive tax system, what they're now calling socialism. Uh, and I think that he was... Uh, I'm not sure John McCain would have ever invaded Iraq. He'll support the troops wherever they are because he's a soldier. But don't tell me he was an adventurer. I don't think he is an adventurer. And I think, I think under different circumstances, he would be the voice of reason about how to deal with Iran. It'd be tough, but I don't think he'd be looking for trouble. He supports wars that once they get started because of the experience he had in Vietnam. I absolutely believe this. He knows what it's like to be in a war where the country drops support for while you're in the field. And he knows what it feels like. So he will always take the side of the, of the warrior in, in combat. But I'm not saying, I don't think he would have been taken over by these guys who talked Bush into the war. When did you including last Cheney, interview? Including Cheney. When did you last interview him? Uh, I did it up at, uh, at Villanova. One of your college We tour? gave him the biggest crowd he had, I think, the whole campaign. And did he have we the had 4,000 students. At, at Villanova. Did he have the nomination? Yeah, yet? he had pretty much wrapped it by then. But he hadn't had the convention. Oh, no, this is, this is, so in, this is in the Pennsylvania primary. Have you primary. tried to interview him since then? It's hard to get these guys. They're, uh, the Schmidt is, uh, is not a big, it's not useful. So you've him. asked and they've said yeah, no. Schmidt doesn't. I mean, I try to, I used to always work with Rick Davis and um, Nicole's nice enough, but they're not, they're not offering them up. They prefer to be in a, in a, in a bunker and argue with the media. They, they, they dig it as a fight. They, want, they think they score points by attacking the media. I've never seen anybody win an election doing it. It's tried all the time. It never works. And every and every campaign it, because and nobody knows what you're talking about. You know, everybody debates whether the media is biased. Uh, yeah. and but yada, uh, yada, yada, but yada. people now choose the media they like, and they and they. I was listening to Fox last night. It was, her, uh, it was hilarious. They were having a debate about the impact of media bias and what it might be doing to the media. Thought, this is Fox. Does anybody get it here? I mean, finally, Mort, to his credit, said, you know. People tend to watch Fox when they don't like what they hear in the mainstream media. At least he gets that there's a, a point of view that's being offered. The other, they were acting like they were like Olympian looking down on the media, you know. Fox is, is what it is, and, 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 and Limbaugh, and, and talk radio is all dominated by the right. I mean, they have a pretty strong voice. I admit that primetime entertainment television is liberal. I admit that the media, the Hollywood is liberal. I admit that. That's pretty obvious. But uh, in terms of the talk shows... Uh, they're more than holding their own. Hollywood hasn't been very important in this campaign. No, I don't know what impact W is going to have. I don't know if it has any impact. No, I, it, it's it for the was, it's, it's for the choir. They already believe it. Part of it put it me to sleep. But yeah. let's play this game a little bit further. Well, I wouldn't um, go to Albert Stone, uh, Stone for history. Well, I would. Um, I it would be this, scary if you got your history take, from that uh, guy. Okay. Although I thought Platoon was a good movie. So I have one thing more I want you to do for me. Since this will air beyond the election. Let's let's just do two scenarios. Talk to me about what the morning after will be like if Obama wins and what the morning after will be like if McCain wins. Well, I was in high school during the, the, new, the new Frontier and people would tell me, Larry Walsh was a classmate and his brother was down here at Georgetown and he would talk about, it. his older brother would tell him how there was a spirit here that you'd never heard before or felt before, that there was a sense of public service and excitement that people at Washington was the place to be. I think there's a very good chance that we're going to see a new frontier, a period where Washington is celebrated and celebrating public service, including the military this service. This is if Obama wins. If Obama wins, yeah. I think it could be an exciting time where it's exciting to be head of the Peace Corps, exciting to be, uh, uh, to be working in any government capacity because there's a real uh, commitment to uh, unity in the country and to uh, public, public service and to the public sector itself, it's not going to be disparaged anymore.